look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays I bump side A. Traffic on bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. My siblings kept it from me. They didn't tell me that my brother had been murdered. It wasn't until a couple years later that they told me. Wow. Because that's how close I was with him. But I just noticed, okay, his car didn't come back. They're like, oh yeah, he'll be back and don't worry, but boom, boom. I didn't know. That hit me. Um, my mother used to put us in the car to go look for my sister down on Skid Row. Mm. That was another side of it. Yeah. I had an uncle who used to, uh, I think it was PCP, <laughs> the drug that he used to be concocting. Mm. There was a project over in Compton now where I think it's the Department of Education right across the street from the uh, post office. Used to be a project building there. I would be riding with him sometimes. He'll pull up there. I'll be right back. And I'm sitting in the car and not realizing what's going on. A couple years later, my family told me, you know what he was doing in there, right? He was cooking up. I had no mm -hmm. idea. I mean, just, just, a, just a collection of things. Right. Just mm -hmm. a collection of things, man, right. that, that, you know. So what was, yeah. what was the aha moment at the young age, you know, when you said it just clicked, like, I can't, I can't keep doing what I'm doing out here? Well, as far as that, yeah, the, yeah, yeah it was all of those. It was a yeah, collection was of those things. Of, it was a collection of those, but I'm trying to, I was never too heavy in right. it. I wasn't too heavy in it. I mean, I, I, dabbling. I was okay. dabbling, but it was I was not heavy in it. I knew that wasn't my purpose. I was trying mm -hmm. to be the you know the super thug, super gangster, and super crip. None of that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do none of that. I've seen it all. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good. But I did yeah. at least want to get some of that experience. You know, you a child. Yeah. You're you want to learn, and you, you're yeah. curious. And I was, but I wasn't that curious because I saw from all these other people what happened to them. You know, and then they would tell me. They would talk to me. Then I would go see the worst part of it when I went to Skid Row a couple times. Mm. I mean, it was. Hell on earth, for real. I mean, every major city has that part. Right. You got that block. You got that neighborhood where that's where the dope fiends are. That's where you end up where it's really hell on earth. People shooting up in the middle of the street. That's that's that part right there in downtown LA. Yeah. And we would go looking for my sister. I would see people, people with no arms, people shooting up heroin, people sniffing, just everything. Like zombies. Like zombies, brother. Mm -hmm. Way back then. It's talking about 95, 96. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I knew. And my mother would tell me, that's what that is. This is what that drug does. That's what this person is on. She would tell me. And my siblings would tell me, that's not what you want to do. So but they it kept the of death of your older brother from you. Yes. They, they showed you this, yes. but kept that from you. For a certain period of time. Because that that's when, my brother. You know, that, was, that was hitting home. When you found out, what was, the, what was your reaction? I mean, it was devastating. It was devastating. Because, you know, I love all of my siblings. And I was young, but they didn't realize how much I was recording in my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell them stories to this. They're like, how the hell you remember that? I was like, look, just, just keep be cool with me. All right? Because <laughs> right, <laughs> I remember. Right, I got it right, right here. Right. I got them seats on you. Right. But no, um, it, was, it was so devastating because, really because of how he went out. It was less that he went out, but how he went out. He was taken out. He was murdered. He was stuffed in the trunk of his own car, and they set his car on fire. It was mm. how he went out. And mm. I said, okay. You know, I, I get why. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, how can you tell right. a five-year-old, six-year-old that? Right. You know what I mean? It's really, I get it. So I, I didn't hold anything against him, but it was just like, wow. Man. And that may have changed the trajectory of your life if you More would have known that at that moment. More than likely. See, we never know. Yeah. We never know what we do to children when we prematurely introduce certain things to them. Certain things are necessary. Mm. Other things, if you can... Hold it, you should. Because what, you know what things do you think? Okay, so like absolutely death of your brother, but um is the rip the band-aid off thing like mm -hmm. is that is that what we need? Because I feel like um a lot of a lot of people keep you know, in these neighborhoods you go, man, they don't know what's going on outside, they don't know. True. You know, it took for my mother to to not be able to take me to school. Mm. for me to have to take two buses into another side of Brooklyn to really see what was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. So that was that was like my rip the band-aid off like now I see it. Mm -hmm. I got to fight junkies heading home. That's real. Cuz they think I got some 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 allowance money or mm -hmm. something or mm -hmm. 
do we need to to <laughs> hold things back? That's a different time. That was the nineties. Right. There was no social media. It's different now. Yeah. You yeah. have to tell them the truth because they're gonna see it anyway. Mm. See, that's the difference now. You can't hold nothing yeah. back now from from these children or this generation. They see it right here. You're not gonna tell them. All right, they're gonna see something. Google, TikTok, all these. But they they're they're seeing more than most parents could ever imagine. I mean, it's, and it's available. It's openly available. So for you to give them the truth is really helping them to have respect for you. But it's not all true. <laughs> right. It's not all true. Right. They're exposed exactly. to vast amounts of information. Mm-hmm. And now it's even now you have to discern. You have to figure out. You got to sort you gotta through. Go through it. Yes. And there's there's no even you, even you as much as people listen to you. Mm-hmm. As many people just want to believe you got to cite your sources. Absolutely. People need to know where who told you that? Okay, are they telling the truth? Absolutely. Who told them that? Okay, are they telling the truth? Mm-hmm. You got the papers to show it? Like mm-hmm. what what where are we getting this from? Exactly. How is this working out? You have How to. do you do research? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, not even the research, but how do you how do you I don't want to use the word convince. Mm-hmm. But people, you have to get people to believe, listen, I'm trying to help you. This is to help you, and I'm telling you the truth. And you'll yes. have people look at you and go, nah. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you do in that? Because that has to be your every day. Oh, yeah. No, There's I've always somebody that. trying to tell you he's lying. Absolutely. Yeah. Or someone making up lies about you. Absolutely. See, the beauty is you trust those who have the long-standing record of being right and exact. That's the number one thing. You go to who it is, you know, for the most part, for the vast majority, has been on point. That's mm-hmm. how it goes. If you happen to have a record like that. Mm-hmm. I'm very grateful and thankful that that has been the record. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when people, you know, that's what a reputation is. You know, that's what credibility is. Credibility is how long have they been doing this consistently without varying or changing. Okay, they're solid. That's why people look at your credit report. They look at, can you be trustworthy? How is your spending habits? What is this person habit? What a habit is, he happens to be telling the truth. That's what mm-hmm. we've always seen. Whether you like it or not, that's what it's been. Okay. Mm-hmm. So with me, I don't necessarily worry about convincing. Mm-hmm. I just speak the truth. Tell you the truth. And then also tell you where to find it so that you could see it as well. Really that simple. Now, if I have to do all that convincing, then at that point, you just don't want to believe that it's true. Mm-hmm. That's perfectly fine too. I ran into that. But at this point, because the system is overwhelming people with information, mm. most of our people don't even realize they're numb to information now. Yeah. So they go with who they like. Right. They go, go with who they trust. First instead of logic. Now it's not even about the research or the information. It's about who's giving it to you. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people trust a person wholeheartedly on face value alone because they just like the person. They like mm-hmm. you. The tone they yeah. use. Yeah, the, the tone is just the way they it's, dress. it's the messenger now. It's not the message. It's the messenger. It's that person that I I just love this person. Okay, mm-hmm. and at times that could be a good thing, but at too often, too many times, it's a very horrible thing. Very horrible. Right. So we have to now, you know, we have to continue to do our job, stay in our lane, and do it well. That's why I don't worry about attacking people. No, he ain't got no he no, unless you work on behalf of the system. That's the difference. Now, if you push the system, I'm going to Go at this enemy through you and say, no, no, no. What he said on behalf of this enemy is wrong. And I'll prove that. But I'm not going to attack. Y'all need to listen to me. Ah, That's ego now. We don't need to worry about that. Just keep doing the work. And guess what? The people who look at it, even those who want to prove you wrong, when they find out it's true, it's like, oh, damn, you was telling the truth. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. You just do the work. I, I think one of, my, one of my fears when it comes to, uh, I'm just going to use the term black leaders. Definitely. One of the one of the fears I have with, with black leaders is, is that they're being brought, or Absolutely. they're being fooled. Mm-hmm. More the second one than the first one, mm-hmm. because every a lot of people have their prices, and nine times out of ten I can't even judge. But like I worry that the information you're disseminating mm-hmm. is incorrect, and you don't know. Mm. Mm-hmm. How long does it take you to figure out this is the thing that's safe for me to tell people? A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays I'm on side A. Traffic on bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. Takes so long to get from Monday to Friday. Then you wake up on Sunday like it was just Friday. Cry pays the iron cage. Had to find ways. I wasn't trying to slave a nine to five till my dying days. Friends.